I am in Oregon. So Oregon. Okay. yeah, West cool. Coast. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's seven a.m. here. What time is it for you? Uh, it's um four, four p.m. Okay. So okay, nice. And where are you? Where are you at? I'm in Gothenburg, West Coast uh, of Sweden. Okay. Have you yeah. always been there? Uh, yeah, actually born and raised here. Okay, awesome. How are yeah. things going with, uh, you know, the global pandemic? How are things for you guys over there? Actually, a little bit unfair because uh, as you might have heard in the, the news, Sweden didn't really initiate any kind of, uh, you know, massive lockdown mm -hmm. uh, of any kind, actually. We didn't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, shut down the bars or restaurants. We didn't uh, lock down the border. And um, I mean, we still we were still doing live shows until recently. Now it's down to 50 people. So it doesn't really make any sense to, to play any shows. But right. despite, despite that fact, um, the death tolls, uh, you know, these days are actually, actually close to zero. Okay. So we, we got them pretty lucky with the whole thing. It might might be a cultural cultural thing mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. because Swedish people, you know, the whole um, country is kind of socially distanced. Right. Lots of small cities with you know lots of space in between. Uh, Swedish people don't really like to be that up and close and personal in general, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that turned out to be an, an advantage in this case, I think. So do you feel like it, you're starting to kind of get it under control over there? Yeah, I think, you know, in the last month or two, things have been, you know, squarely under control, As, especially in the last two, three weeks when the death rate dropped to next to zero. Okay, sure. So I think that you, you can say that if no people are dying, then, you know, that's definitely a good thing. But I mean, the virus is still spreading, you know, of course, but. Mm -hmm. Is there still, is there like, uh, you know, like here we, uh, it depends on the state. So in Oregon, mm -hmm. If I go out, uh, especially in a public space like a grocery store or the gym, I have to mm -hmm. wear a face mask. Was that mm -hmm. ever a mandate in Sweden? You don't see any people using face masks. We were actually doing a short um, promo tour maybe a month and a half ago. So we mm -hmm. went to Germany, to France and to Helsinki mm -hmm. in Finland. So and there we obviously had to use, uh, you know, the face masks everywhere, especially in the airports, which I, you know, completely condone and understand. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. We haven't used them in Sweden, but still things are working quite good for us. I think that you need to take it, you know, from a, on a region to region basis, basically city to city right. basis. Because mm -hmm. if you're in a, you know, the virus spreading rapidly, then you should do everything that you can, mm -hmm. you know, including face, face masks, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I think because I think it's Sweden that people throw around as an example of how how they handled things like was it the more the approach like the herd immunity approach i've heard of that thrown around and i can't remember if that was sweden that was doing that or a different european country no it's been uh, sweden that the people have been talking about okay that's what i thought mm -hmm. yeah exactly mm -hmm. but i don't know i mean we never stated that this was our official policy because it will sound kind of grim you know if you're telling the population that we're going to get as many of uh, of you right. as possible mm -hmm. infected so we can stem the, the the spread it sounds a little bit morbid you know obviously mm -hmm. so right. it was never the, you know the um, outspoken policy of the country but yeah. i think you know probably it still was the idea at the end of the day mm -hmm. yeah I, I think the idea was as long as the hospitals are not overwhelmed most people will catch the virus anyway and it's too long to wait for a vaccine i think that was the opinion of the experts basically yeah is this giving you a, you know, as we get further into this, a roundabout idea of like when you guys may be touring again, when you actually may be able to play to a large amount of people? Yeah, the thing is that um, we were supposed to be on the US tour right now. Mm -hmm. I think we we're supposed to be in Boston or somewhere thereabouts. Uh, but yeah, it's difficult to say. We uh, rescheduled our European tour to mm -hmm. um, uh, April of next year. Yeah. And the thing is that from October 1st, there's going to be an announcement in Sweden whether or not we will open up for concerts with 500 people. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, 500 people is hardly back completely to normal. But if you right. can do 500 in Sweden, if you can do 500 in Europe, for example, it still would make, you know, some sense to do a shorter yeah. tour, at least, you know, right. to, to show to the world that, you know, live concerts are coming back and, you know, Amaranth is mm -hmm. staying active and stuff like that. But yeah. if it's a 500 in October, then, you know, for things to be, you know, almost back to normal in April, I don't think it's such a stretch, actually. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm obviously not an expert, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I think it will take a bit longer for the US mm -hmm. since the whole pandemic hits you a little bit later. Yeah. I think that's the discrepancy <laughs> at the end of the day. Right. But, um, so what we are doing is that we're just, we're holding dates for next year 
mm-hmm. in the US. I can't really say when yet, but right, right. that's ba- basically our strategy at the moment. And let's, let's see if it happens, but we're crossing our fingers, basically. Is there a certain perception when you, uh, you know, when you look to the US right now, is it like, oh gosh, that's a, that's a dumpster fire. I'm glad I'm not over there. Like, I'm, one, I'm always curious about like, what Europeans are thinking about how we're handling things right now. Yeah, the different perspectives. Just as I said, it's really interesting to see, you know, how Donald Trump was talking about Sweden, for example, and mm-hmm. all these things. Not to get political at all, but I mean, I think the perception of the US in Europe is that it's, it's kind of bad at the mm-hmm. moment. You can probably yes. remember what the <laughs> USS perception of Spain and Italy was. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit like like that. So, but it, just like you say, I think it's a little bit on a region to region basis. I have a friend who lives mm-hmm. in uh, New York, mm-hmm. but actually went to Sweden right before the whole pandemic hit. Yeah, and uh, her opinion of New York at the moment is that it kind of burned through the population in a really bad way. But it, you have a similar effect to Sweden mm-hmm. that things are now at least in New York City. You know which mm-hmm. is not a city that is big on social distancing, of course, Right. Uh, that things are getting a little bit better over there from what I hear. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, mm-hmm. let's say the, the, the medial image of the US right now is a little bit bleak here in Europe, yes. And it, it's felt bleak. I mean, it's, it's also, like I said, we don't have to dig too much in, into politics, but it is a election year. So yeah. things are always a little more heated on both sides. You get misinformation on both sides. But then, you know, you stack an election year on top of a pandemic, on top of a lot of uh, just unrest with like racial injustices and all that stuff. And it's just this recipe for some craziness. Hopefully, I mean, I think we're gonna come out of it better than we were, um, but yeah, it's, it has been pretty bleak. 2020 has been an interesting year and, and thankfully, um, you know, bands like Amaranth are still deciding to release music because we desperately need music as something to like listen to and to, you know, escapism from all this craziness. Yeah, it's good to, good to hear because that was exactly our, you know, line of thought and our way of reasoning because there was a dialogue that we had with the management and with the label when they were kind of, you know, asking us like, so do you still think it's a great, good idea to release it, the release manifest now in the fall? Mm-hmm. Because you won't be able to tour on the album the same way. You won't, won't be able to promote the album in the same way. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, you know, twofold. One is the perspective, just like you said, that Amaranth has been known to compose and, you know, play quite uplifting and energetic and positive music. Exactly. And I think that mm-hmm. if there's any context, you know, that this music could be, you know, proved to be quite valuable. It's definitely in the, the ongoing situation. Mm-hmm. You know, when we took this decision, I was hoping for things to be, you know, more or less over in October, but we're now, in, you know, almost halfway into September and things are still, you know, we're still quite knee deep into to the whole situation. So I, th- I think it was a, you know, a great decision from that perspective. And if you want to be cynical about it, you're going to have a lot less com- competition, naturally. That's true. So there, there's also that. And I mean that in the sense, not, you know, to be opportunistic and to try to make money from the situation, but the more people who listen to the band, the you know, better it is for us, obviously. When you compose your music, it's always fun, you know, when you can reach people who actually appreciate what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this is a great time, everybody. I didn't do introductions, but this is Olaf. <laughs> he does the guitars and the keyboards for, uh, for Amaranth, and they are releasing on October 2nd. Uh, their newest album, Manifest. How did you guys come up with that name? It's actually, it was something that just kind of popped into my head as we were sitting in in a van on our way to, um, to I think it might have been to to Denmark, actually. And uh, I was just bouncing it, you know, with, with everybody, like, um, so Manifest, what do you think? Because mm-hmm. I didn't, I knew what, what it meant to me, but I didn't really have the time to explain what the meaning was. And everybody in the van was just like, hell yes. I yeah. ran it by the management as well, you know, just mm-hmm. two seconds later on my phone. And they're like, yeah, that's a great name. Because right. at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to album titles, there's, um, you know, a few prerequisites that you should take into consideration. That mm-hmm. first of all, it should have a strong, catchy sounding name. It should grab your attention. Right. Uh, a bit of a mis- mysterious feeling, like what is the band saying with this title? What mm-hmm. do they intend with it? Uh, the second part is that, it, I mean, it should also have... Um, uh, great linguistic meaning as well. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing with the, with the manifest title is that it's both an adjective, a verb and a noun. Mm. So um, it can be a verb in the sense that you, you, know, you manifest music into being, right. mm-hmm. or our music is manifest as the adjective, for example. Mm-hmm. And yep. a manifest is also you know, um, 
list of intentions. And, right. I was uh, going to say like ideas. some kind of document you could make it in, into your manifest or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, more closely in, in German and in um, Swedish, uh, manifest has the same meaning as manifesto as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there is also that little bit of a um, uh, double meaning also. Mm -hmm. And was this, uh, when did you guys have it like completely recorded and ready to go? We were done about um, late May, I think. We started to record in um, right in the middle of um, March, okay. exactly when the um, pandemic hit the uh, hit the scene. It's you know over here in Northern Europe. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so we was um, a little bit more than two months in the studio. Okay, and correct me if I'm wrong. Do you have two or three singles out right now? Yeah, it's uh, two singles so far. First one was uh, viral, released uh -huh. back in June, I believe, yeah. and uh, or no, or early July. And then uh, the latest single is called "The Strong." Mm -hmm. And there's also an upcoming single called uh, "Archangel," which is going to be okay. released in a week and a half, about. Okay. Yeah, I was actually just thinking about that. Um, how crazy that you guys wrote a song called "Viral," and uh, we yeah. have this global pandemic going on. Was that was there any pre-planning to that, or was, did that just kind of happen? That's the interesting thing is that I had the title already, it might have been November, December of uh -huh. last year. Mm -hmm. And most of the lyrics were already written, I think, mm -hmm. you know, early January before the pandemic was even close to hitting, you know, the Western world yeah. whatsoever. So uh, we only needed, you know, slight adjustments, different words here and there, you know, mm -hmm. in order for it to, you know, perfectly co-align with, with, the, with the pandemic. But it's, it's more of a commentary on, you know, how we are dealing with the pandemic more than the pandemic itself. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, chorus line dictates that now in the light of the screen, our screens we hide mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that everybody becomes, uh, you know, epi epidemiologist and right. uh, you know, <laughs> an expert on, you know, mm -hmm. masks and all those kinds of things. And we don't take sides in this debate. I just find right. it to reconnect to what we were talking about before that, you know, have wearing a mask regardless of, you know, what the side you, you are on, that it should mm -hmm. be, become a political topic divided right. along party lines. To me, that is a, more than a little bit absurd, I have to be it's honest. It's very silly, yes. Exactly. But uh, yeah, it was a little bit uh, prophetic with the title Viral. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that I will probably not come up with a title like Alien Invasion or Massive Dinosaur <laughs> Escape or something like that for the next album. So. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to predict something ahead of time again. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so, you know, it's a classic question, but how mm -hmm. does, you know, when you were approaching this album, um, first off, I'm interested in the process. Like, is, mm -hmm. are all the ideas coming from you and then you're pitching them to the band? Uh, let's start with that. Actually, um, it's almost always a product of me and Elise sitting mm -hmm. down together, Elise the singer. Yep. Uh, she's a phenomenal songwriter, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, when it comes to um, uh, vocal lines and yes. also, you know, fu fundamental lyrical ideas as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, usually we just sit down because um, a lot of bands who have, you know, some form of success, they tend to build like a studio, do it really professionally, invest in a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. We just sit down with the same shitty ass gear that I was using, you know, 10 years ago right. in my apartment, you know, having some red wine, maybe cooking some dinner, you know, and write music together as friends mm -hmm. to have it as spontaneous as possible. She lives mm -hmm. not far away from me also, just a couple of miles mm -hmm. uh, down the road. So she can pop by whenever, you know, she has ideas or something like that. But we're usually, um, and that's also a little bit co correlated to the manifest title that mm -hmm. we, instead of sitting down and writing music, we just kind of manifest it into being. The sure. arrangement usually takes a long time, but the song idea is usually instantaneous. It's mm -hmm. usually come, you know, me sitting with the guitar or by the keyboards and it is singing vocal lines and just, you know, putting those different things together. Mm -hmm. And once you have a, you know, phenomenal chorus, a great uh, chord progression, then it's an easy thing to, to write a killer riff, you know, based mm -hmm. upon that. Mm -hmm. Is at that point, are you taking it to the band? Um, I'm just wondering, like, are you writing most of the guitar riffs on the albums? Yeah, I, I write all the guitars and uh, the um, basics for the drums and, um, you know, okay. uh, and the bass and also the keyboards, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, Morton, our drummer, what he does mm -hmm. is that he takes my, you know, program drum, drums and turn it into, into real drums, basically. Sure, sure. Exactly, exactly like you were saying, once we have a um, fundamental song idea that sounds, you know, 
somewhat listenable. Mm -hmm. Our uh, demos are always, you know, very quick sketches because we don't really believe in wasting time doing those, yeah. you know, too, in too much detail. But as soon as we have something that is listenable, we usually uh, run it by the band. It's always interesting to, to hear their take on things. And mm -hmm. we do listen to, to their thoughts and ideas and, you know, mm -hmm. in what direction they would like their parts to go and, you know, or in general about the song itself. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious because I know there's, you know, two vocalists in this band. You have that female yeah. and the male attack. Um, there's probably some backing vocals going on too. Uh, but I was curious, like with the male clean vocals, kind of when, when he jumps into the process. Yeah. It's um, usually uh, with Nils, I tend to uh, send, um, send the song ideas quite, quite early so he can, uh, make adjustments if he wants to, to you know, mm -hmm. have his vocal lines go in different directions. Because usually at that point, we haven't really chosen which part will be sung by Nils or which parts will be sung by Elise, right. the two different clean vocalists. Mm -hmm. So um, it's always interesting to hear their opinions, uh, you know, Nils's opinion, which part would he like to sing? Yeah. If it's the, the verse, for example, is it something that he would like to change? That, mm -hmm. you know, does he want it to go higher or lower or, you know, slightly alter the, the vocal lines and stuff like that. But usually he runs with what we uh, have written. I mean, he's a phenom phenomenal songwriter in his own right. He also writes uh, songs for a band called Dynasty, phenomenal band. Mm -hmm. But um, we have our, our, you know, our trademark sound when it comes to, to songwriting. So thus far, it's only me and Elise writing songs, but right. we're not really dictators in any sense at all. I mean, mm -hmm. if anybody has any idea, then we're always, you know, completely open to, you know, trying to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a track called Boom on the album, yep. which is basically mine and Hendrix's idea, but mm -hmm. not so much musically, but what the song, you know, should sound like, you know, yeah. sometimes you can write a song by talking about the song yeah. and just humming <laughs> it, you know, instead mm -hmm. of actually writing something specific. Mm -hmm. So once you have talked about a song, you know, two hours here, here and there, then yeah. it's kind of obvious, you know, for the composer, which would be me, you know, mm -hmm. where, you, you know, how to write that song based upon what Henrik has been saying, basically. So mm -hmm. it differs a little bit. And I think that that's the song that you, she's from Butcher Babies. Is her name Heidi? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. How'd you get her involved? We're uh, good friends since we toured together back in 2000. 15, I believe it was. Yeah, end of yeah. 2015, almost uh -huh. five years ago now, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, so we were on tour together around the US and, you know, we became really good friends. And we were at some point, you know, when we were writing the Boom song, mm -hmm. I think this was Henrik, uh, Henrik's idea, actually, that it would have been fun right before the breakdown to yeah. have some kind of Cali, you know, valley girl kind of accent coming <laughs> right. like that mm -hmm. asking like okay so what else goes boom because he's describing everything that is going boom in the song right uh, really intellectual lyrics <laughs> 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 and uh we were like so who do we know that has this kind of you know valley girl accent we we're like yeah Heidi can do a pretty mean impression of that being from LA, you know, yeah, and, or yeah. at least living in LA for the last 15, 20 years. So, mm -hmm. so we just dropped the, the by her and two or three hours later, she had like 25 different takes of the spoken parts <laughs> and, you know, sent over. So it's fun to uh, have a, this small, you know, cameo, mm -hmm. which is basically yeah. it. Right. <laughs> Cause I think you also got, you know, you got Apocalyptica in there. I think Jeff mm -hmm. Loomis, Angela Gasau, I think she's more in the bonus tracks, Angela. And doesn't Angela yeah, exactly. also uh, manage you guys? Yeah, she's our manager since uh, uh -huh. August uh, 18, yeah. Yeah. What's that like? What's Angela like? She, uh, she is phenomenal. The mm -hmm. thing is that I would never like to, would I like to be on the other side of the table when it comes to a mm -hmm. negotiation with Angela because she's mm -hmm. fierce and yeah. she knows what she wants. And sure. <laughs> after being an artist herself, you know, for almost 20 years in the metal business, Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, pretty damn successful one at that. She knows exactly what she can demand in a certain context. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amaranth is mm -hmm. growing. It's not a huge band yet, mm -hmm. but we are still, you know, in the position when we have been having negotiations with different partners. She yeah. knows what level we are at, so she knows what she can demand. And the record labels can't read, really, for example. Nuclear Blast have been, you know, super mm -hmm. friendly. It's nothing bad about them, but no one can bullshit us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. But w with that said, she has a very fierce side. But on the other hand, in private, she's also an extremely nice person, very mm -hmm. warm hearted, and she really cares about the artists. Yeah. Partly because she's a good person, but also partly because she has been in tour buses and sleeping at airports and, you know, mm -hmm. having these tough schedules herself, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, and the fact that she's continuing to kind of work in the scene, 
I, I know she's had some vocal guest spots here and there, but I mean, yeah. I think that that shows that she she really loves metal. She really loves the music. It, I mean, she continues to want to work there, but uh, or work uh, in that scene. Um, but that I just found that really cool because she's such she's a legend. She's a metal legend. Yeah, I agree. And it was her suggestion to do some guest growling on the do or die track. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, it's going to be her, you know, right, return right. To, to the scene, a little bit of a you know, mini comeback on one of our songs. And we already had this slightly arch enemies sounding Amaranth song, you know, in the pipeline. So we're like, okay, yeah, we got, we got the perfect track for you as well. Yeah. That was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> well, well, Olaf, I know you got other interviews and I don't want to run you too far behind, but is there anything else you just want to tell people about the new album, about Manifest, before I let you go? I will tell them to uh, check it out when it's out. Okay. And there's been a lot of discussion about how crappy, you know, Spotify is not giving revenue to artists, but I can say that Spotify is what's keeping us running. So if you want to mm -hmm. stream the album, you don't have to buy it. You can also stream it, get it, listen to it, and we would love to hear you guys' opinions. Perfect, Olaf. Thank you so much for joining me, Hornside brother. Thank you so very much for having me, Ty. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I wish you a great day. I'd like to thank Olaf again for joining me. We had a great chat. Make sure to check out Manifest on October 2nd, or if it's already out, go enjoy it. Um, you know, that's their newest release by Amaranth. We have links in the description of where you can find the album and support the band. Make sure you support us too if you like what you saw. Hit subscribe, uh, hit the bell so you're notified on new episodes. We're also available on social media, uh, Super Metal World is how you would find us. And we have a website. Uh, where you can find everything we have to offer, www.supermetalworld.com. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Horns high. Take care.